How do you move a player in Unity? You're going to find out. I'll show you how to move an object in Unity with just a few lines of code. I'm Jeremy Morgan, and we're going to learn together. Let's get started. We're going to create a player object that's just a cube that moves around. Now, by the end of this short video, you'll know how to create an object that you can move around with a keyboard and even have the camera follow it. Now, a written version of this tutorial is linked in the description. Open up Unity Hub and create a new project. Select a blank project, the 3D Core. Now, I'm going to name it 3D Fun, and I'll select the location in which I want to store my files. And we'll click Create Project. Now we have a brand new Unity project. Now the first thing we'll do is add some terrain. And this will be just a plane that we can put our objects on. Right click in the hierarchy and we'll create a new game object. 3D object, terrain. Then we'll add the object that we're going to move around. And then this is going to be our player. We'll go to game object, 3D object, and cube. And now we need to adjust our camera. So when we run the game, it looks a little weird. Let's line it up better with our game object. Now, right click on assets and create a new folder named scripts. This is going to house our C-sharp files that actually make the game work. Right click on the assets folder and create new C-sharp script. I'm going to name it player movement. And now drag the script onto the cube. Let's open the script. Select the game object and locate the script and click here. Now it opens up in your editor. At the top of the class, we're going to add this code. These properties store the horizontal and vertical input that comes from the player. It's a temporary storage area. We'll take input from the keyboard and axis values and we'll store it here. And then later, Unity can access these values to move our player. In our update method, we'll get the access values and populate those fields. Now, if you remember from previous tutorials, the update method runs continually throughout the game. It's read once per frame, so any changes here are noticed immediately. Let's read our values from the keyboard and store them in the properties that we just created. Next, we'll add the player movement. Okay, we're not gonna skip through this. Let's check through this code a little bit closer. The first line moves the player forward and backward based on the player's input. Now, transform is the transform component of a game object. This object contains information such as position, rotation, and scale. Translate is a built-in method in Unity that allows you to move a game object across a certain distance in a certain direction. Now, vector3 forward is the forward direction of a game object, and it usually moves in the direction that it's facing. Time.delta time is the amount of time that's passed since the last frame. Now this is used to make movement smooth no matter how fast or slow your device is. And I'll make a video about this soon. Vertical input is our value that we receive from the keyboard. It can be positive or negative. If it's positive, we go forward. If it's negative, we go backward. Now the second line of code is very similar, but it controls right versus left movements in the same way. Okay, enough theory, let's try this out. When you go back to the Unity screen, it will compile the script that you just built. Let's run it. As we can see, it moves back and forth. Now, this is pretty washed out. Let's change the color of the object because it's really hard to see right now. Right-click in Assets and create a new material. You can choose a color for your material and then save it. Then just drag that material onto your game object. Now, notice it kind of strafes along when you go right or left. You know, objects really don't slide left and right like that most of the time. Let's add a rotation to make it a little bit more realistic. We want this to behave more like a car. Select the object and open up the player movement script again. Let's create a public float named turn speed. This will be the speed that the object rotates when you press left or right. Since we're moving forward, our object should continue to move in the direction that we point it. Here we have another built-in method in Unity to rotate instead of transform. Then we're using the up direction, multiplying it by our turn speed, 
and again using delta time to smooth it out. So instead of moving the object to right or left, kind of strafing it, we'll rotate it. Let's see what that looks like. Ah, now it steers more realistically. It's behaving somewhat like a car. But if we drive it too long, it will leave the screen. Let's make the camera follow it. Create a new C Sharp script called Follow Player, and then attach it to the camera. And let's open up that script. Add public game object cube to the top of the script. Ah, we have a new concept here. What does this do? It declares a public variable of a game object type. We're naming this variable cube so that we can use it later. Unity will have to pass a game object into this variable so that we can work with it. And I'll show you how to do that in a minute. We can then read this game object to see where it is and move the camera to wherever it's going. So let's add some code that makes our camera position link to the position of the cube and move when the cube moves. As you can see here, the transform position of our camera is directly linked to the cube transform position. So let's save it and run it. And now we have to tell Unity to add this cube into that variable that we created. Drag the cube from the hierarchy into the cube section of the script here. Now the camera is following it, but we can't see the cube or the player. We need to offset that a little bit. We need to move the camera back. To do that, we'll take our position, match it to the cube's position, and then we'll create a new vector three that offsets the camera. It will tell the camera to move up and back so it's looking down on our object. Now vector three objects determine the object's position in space, and we'll do a video on that soon. Now the camera should be back and away from the object so we can see the object. Let's run it. Now we are following the cube or the player around as it moves. Now this is how you create a player in Unity. Now of course you'll wanna replace this with a person or a vehicle or something, but I wanted to demonstrate how this is done. I hope it makes sense and it helped you out. I also have a link to a blog post in the description. Thanks for watching this. If you wanna learn more about building games in Unity, follow me on this channel. Also, I live stream every week and build Unity games on my stream. So log on to Twitch and follow me here. Thanks for watching.